In this WordPress child theme tutorial, I'm gonna explain the few cases where you still need a child theme these days. There aren't very many. There's a high likelihood that you do not need one because most people don't, to be honest. And I'm making this video because I get a lot of questions about child themes and how to use them and people are confused as to when and why to use them. I hope this video helps explain some of that. If you don't agree with what I'm saying or if you have other ideas about why child themes are so necessary for everybody, please leave that information in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your business, and for your clients. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And we're gonna start on this video right now. Child themes are becoming more and more of a relic. The big idea behind child themes was that when you are editing your parent theme, the main theme, and you make changes to a template file, or a CSS file, or the functions file to add functionality to your site, when the parent theme is updated and you update that through WordPress, your changes might be deleted. They might be removed. And so the child theme was created to allow you to make those changes inside the child theme so that when the parent theme is updated, your edits in the child theme are not affected. And those edits are still applied to your site and it looks the way you want it to look and you don't have to redo your work. And the child theme functionality for WordPress was created before page builders were a thing, before the WordPress customizer was a thing, we used to have something called theme panels or theme options where every theme would have under settings usually, or they have their own menu item. It would be basically a page where you go to and you can edit all the settings for the theme right there. So you make a change, you save it, you go to your website, you refresh the page, see what happened, and go back and forth like that. And that's how we customize themes. That was fairly advanced because before that, you have to do it manually with CSS, HTML, PHP. And then page builders came along and now we make our edits right in page builders, drag and drop. If you update your theme, it doesn't affect the customization you've made in your page builder unless the theme updates somehow adversely affect the website itself, which is not common. And if we go into the customizer, pretty much every theme now has the customizer. You go to appearance and they customize. And the 2019 theme is the one on this site. And you make changes in here to whatever options they give you. Paid themes give you a whole lot more options. Free ones give you some options. And any changes you make in here, they are also not changed when the parent theme is updated. You can even add additional CSS. This is something you have to do in a CSS file previously, a long time ago. And then when you update your theme, that might be overwritten. All your changes might be overwritten. So the child theme saved you from that. Now we can put our CSS right in here. You don't have to worry about it. We can add plugins to our website. There's a snippets plugin that allows you to add snippets to pretty much any part of the site. Snippets just being short pieces of code. And you can add them to your functions file in that regard, in that way. And that again allows you to have your changes or your, your functions put into that plugin. When the parent theme is updated, those changes are not deleted. And so if you're a regular WordPress user using page builders, creating your design changes inside of the customizer or the page builder, you don't need a child theme anymore because you're not editing anything that the parent theme updates will overwrite. If you are making changes to the functions file, the functions.php file, and you're creating functionality through that file, which allows you to add code to it, PHP code, which can replace plugins on your site, for example. Or you can do advanced things that there aren't plugins for currently. You can basically make your own functionality in WordPress through the functions file. And you can also edit the template files themselves, which is not common these days, but it's still something you can do. And if you do either of those two things, you still need a child theme. Because the last thing you want is to put in all that work, making custom functionality, and then have it overwritten when you update the parent theme. And the functions file, this is an example of a blog post. There's lots of these kind of posts. 17 WordPress functions.php file hacks, basically code that you can copy and paste put into your functions file and either replace plugins you currently have on your site or add functionality that you didn't think was easily possible before. It's super easy, just copy and paste. And this is what the functions file allows you to do. And it's one of the few remaining places where child themes are still required because there's no easy alternative inside the WordPress admin. We don't have a spot like the additional CSS. We don't have a add functions.php code here box anywhere inside of WordPress. Maybe that'll come in the future, but right now we don't. And until that's there, we're still gonna need child themes. And one of the reasons it's been pretty confusing is you have themes like Astra, for example, where if you have the pro version, you can get the child theme. You download it right here. 
And a lot of themes offer the child theme that you can download and use. But for reasons I just went over, you don't really need that if you're a regular WordPress user. To quickly recap, if you are making your sites using page builders or Gutenberg, and you're putting your CSS code, if you do any CSS at all, if you're putting it inside the customizer or putting it into a plugin, like a snippets plugin that allows you to add CSS code through a plugin, then you do not need a child theme. You do need a child theme if you are making additions to your functions file, or if you're making additions directly to a CSS file, or if you're making changes to template files like the header.php file or the footer.php file. If you don't know what those are, you probably don't need to worry about it. If you do want to know what they are and you do want to know how to create child themes, I've got a playlist for them up above. Check that out if you want to. So the bottom line is child themes are not necessary anymore for most WordPress users. If you think you might need one or you're not sure, leave a comment down below and let's talk about it. If you want to know more about child themes and how they work, check out this playlist right up here. And then make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from the WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.